Greetings to so many of you who have previously participated in Teach Children to Save Day and to all of you who are newcomers. We appreciate each and every one of you. I am Judy Austin with the Center for Economic Education and Entrepreneurship at the University of Delaware. And as you may know, our center works with Delaware Bankers Association and you to bring the Teach Children to Save Day lessons to third and fourth grade classes throughout the state. Most of you will be visiting classroom, but some of you will be teaching virtually as selected by either you or the teacher. So our book format this year is different than it has been in the past. Instead of creating an Investo book, Greg Kozluck with DBA has put a new story in comic book form. Um, and after you, after you finish the lesson, each student is going to receive a comic book to take home. In previous years, I've made the suggestion of placing post-it notes uh, where questions would be asked according to the lesson plan. But in this format, where a question is to be asked, you will find a big stop sign. And on the stop sign, it directs you to the corresponding number on the lesson plan of the questions that you will be asking. So you'll kind of go back and forth from um, the book to the lesson plan. Now, the way I can envision this happening is that um, students do not have the stop signs in their books. Just you will be working from, from your special volunteer book. And I would suggest that you probably want to go through and make some notes um, or highlight the references. What I've done, just because it's a little difficult to read on the stop signs, what I've done is next to it, I have written LP for lesson plan number, and it tells me exactly where I'm going to then go on the lesson plan. So you might want to do that ahead of time. And as you read, you or the teacher, and it would be nice if the teacher would do this, um, will be displaying the student edition of the comic book on the, whatever their projection system is, whether... Um, it's a document camera or a smart board system. It's gonna be projected. So the students are seeing um, just their script in the comic book. So they won't know about your stop signs. And what I would suggest, especially if a teacher's doing it for you, if, if the person who's projecting it would use a plain, white sheet. And then as you finish reading a box, slide it down as needed to see the rest of the pages. So you have um, copies of, you should, you yourself should have a copy of your volunteer book. And, and a copy probably of the student edition also. So just so you can see the difference. Um, you are, if you're going in person, you are going to bring one copy of the handout per student. And so I would suggest bring 30 because that would be more than enough. Although if, you're, if your teacher says, oh no, I only have 20, then it's fine to just make 22, 24, something like that. I'm hoping you will get in touch with your teacher before doing all this so that you and she can agree on, you know, confirm the date, the time, and, um, and perhaps you can get the number of students and so forth ahead of time. So what you're going to do as preparation is that you're going to read for yourself through the comic book 
and read through the lesson. I would just suggest practicing it, particularly those of you who are kind of old hats at this. And um, but it's because it's a different format. I think probably um, you need to practice actually reading it ahead of time. And before beginning the lesson, um, you're going to ask the teacher about displaying the book as you're reading and have handout one ready to be passed out when needed. Um, as I said, you might want to either highlight, which from if you're used to me, you know that I am big on highlighting lots of things, highlighting the lesson plan, possibly highlighting your stop signs or, or right next to it, what number on the lesson plan it agrees with. Um, and and uh, the teacher, I'm, I am not sure because I don't do this part of it, uh, whether you will have the comic books to take with you or whether the teacher gets them in her packet. Um, but make sure the teacher has the the comic books that will be the student editions to be handed out after the lesson. And um, many of you choose to take some kind of a gift for the students. Please be sure to wait till the end of the lesson before you give those out because they will be a great distraction if you hand them out at the beginning. So you're going to start by introducing yourself and your bank and um, making sure that students have pencils on their desks that they're going to need for the activity. And then um, you're going to begin by asking, what does it mean to save money? And of course, you'll get all kinds of answers and, and be tactful, <laughs> um, you know, and, and go with a good attitude of fun, knowing that you're going to have a fun time with these students. And so then you're also going to ask, um, why is saving money important? Again, you'll get various answers and ask how many of you save your money. Uh, you might even be going to a bank at school, school participant, uh, participating school. And so um, hopefully your third and fourth graders might even have bank at school accounts. So then you're going to show the cover of the book, of the of the comic book. Ooh, let's see. How can I do this? Maybe like that. And you're going to read the title and the author. This is The Great Investo and Penny in Big Money Trouble. And then you're going to begin to read the story, stopping as indicated, um, where you're going to need to look at your um, lesson plan. And so I'm going to read the story to you for right now. And this is a story, if, you know, if you're familiar with Great Investo, you know that he always has these grandiose ideas and somehow he's not very good at being the money magician that he thinks he is. So, the Great Investo. It was a normal day at the home of the Great Investo, the world's worst money magician, or at least as normal as it gets. Uh, which is not very normal. Investo, what are you up to now? Says Penny. Penny, you're just in time. I need a victim. Um, I mean, a, a volunteer for a new trick. If it's anything like your old tricks, I'm worried, said Penny. What are you complaining about? Your hair grew back, didn't it? Obviously, something he did in the past did not turn out very well. So I'm trying to come up with a magic way to make money. Oh, you have money problems. <laughs> Just the opposite, as he pulls his pockets, his empty pockets out. Just the opposite. You have to have money before you can have money problems. I need a new wand, a new crystal ball. Oh, and I'd like a unicycle, too. Sounds like a scarcity problem to me, says Penny. Scar City? 
That's what my elbow looked like when I fell off that ladder. And at that point, you see a stop sign and it says, go to lesson plan number four. Actually, it says refer to procedure four. In my notes, I have LP four. So um, it, it says, explain, I'm going to hang up the scarcity card. You have this in your packet, the word wall card. And hang that up so that the kids can see it is not scar city. It is scarcity. But you're going to explain that the root word of scarcity is scarce. And the reason I'm emphasizing that is because oftentimes when you say to the students, you know, what does scarce mean? They relate it to scared. And so you have to be sure that they're not thinking in that way. Scarcity, scarce is something entirely different. So does anyone have an idea what scarcity means? And particularly fourth graders, probably third too. Somebody in the class might know what scarcity means. So let's read and find out. So you're going to continue to read in your comic book. Penny says, scarcity is when you have unlimited wants, but limited resources. Huh? Says Investo. It means you want a lot, but don't have the money to get it. And again, you come to a stop sign and it says, refer to procedure five, which means lesson plan number five. And and it tells less number five says, um, stopping as indicated on page two, which is what this is. And you're going to ask, what are some things you want? So it, it naturally flows into that question. And actually, in your copy, you have all this space out to the side that if you want to write the question in here, that works fine too and not have to refer back to the lesson plan. So, so number five says to ask, what are some of the things you want? And of course, they'll have various um, responses to that. And then say, do you have enough money to get that? And if not, that is what scarcity is. So six tells you to continue reading. Um, Let's illustrate it at the bakery. Oh boy, they make my favorite cookies. So they go to the bakery and Investo says, I'd like a super duper chocolate chip cookie, please. The baker responds, sorry, I didn't have enough flour to make cookies and bread. So I only made bread. That's a scarcity of flour suggests Penny. Or let's say you want to go on a vacation. You can only take one suitcase, but there isn't enough room for everything you want to bring. That's a scarcity of space. Hmm. Or you want to go to the movies, but you have to cut the grass. You don't have enough time to do both. So Investo says, hmm, that's a scarcity of time, right? <gasps> now you get it. And there is a stop sign to go to number six on your lesson plan, which says many things in life can be scarce other than just money. And what things were scarce in the story that we've just read? And of course, it was the flower, um, the space, the time. So lots of things can be scarce. And I know how to fix it, says Investo. Oh, no, this is where Investo always gets into trouble. So Investo gets to work. And in your comic book, there's just a picture of all these things that he's doing, putting this machine together. And here's my new invention an anti-scarcity machine. You might want to say to the kids, and this is not in the lesson plan, but so what does anti mean if it's a prefix? And it means the opposite of. So um, 
the anti-scarcity machine means it's going to make something that might be scarce into some in, into something that's not scarce. Seriously, said Penny. And how does that work? All I have to do is place a dollar bill in here, and here's this great big machine, place a dollar bill in here, and I'll get lots of bills out the other end. We all know about Investo. And so the machine works and works, and it does all this, you know, lots of noises with it and so forth. And, and he puts this dollar bill in. I, mean, I don't know where he got the dollar bill. Maybe he borrowed it from Penny because his pockets were empty. But um, so he puts this dollar <laughs> bill in. And instead of, instead of lots of bills coming out, one giant dollar bill came out. And Penny says, Investo, your machine didn't make lots of dollars. It just made your $1 bill larger. Now you can't even spend that. Oh, sure I can, said Investo. Come on and see. This thing is too big to fold and put in my pocket. <laughs> Penny's laughing and she says, maybe you should have made a giant wallet too. Just pop in here and buy a candy bar. And the next picture shows him being kicked out after he tries to set to, to spend his big dollar bill. And you're popping out just as quickly. And there's another stop sign and it says, go to lesson plan seven, which says to you to ask, why couldn't Investo spend his great big dollar bill? Well, the reason is that, that in our country, only government-issued bills are currency that would be acceptable. And so um, obviously this one was not government-issued. So continue reading, which is what eight tells you to do. And take your silly money with you says the, the cashier at the store after he kicks him out. Uh, guess he didn't think it was legal tender. And down a little asterisk that says legal tender means it's real money. That government issued money. Oh, says Investo because he landed on his head. My head's getting tender too. Watch where you're waving that because it's so big <laughs> that as he's trying to hold on to this bill, it's floating out, hitting other people, doing all kinds of things. And Investor says, oh, relax. It's just a little breeze. Don't worry, Penny. I have it under control. Uh-oh. Be careful, Investo, as he's trying to control his big dollar bill. It's catching on to the bumper of the car. And vroom, as the car takes off, guess what? Investo's holding on to the money. He takes off with the car, yelling, hey, stop. Screech. And Investo flips over. And lands, I, I guess this must be a British car, obviously, a little British sports car, because the driver's on the wrong side. And Investo flips over and lands in the passenger seat of the car. Investo, give up, said Penny. You're too attached to that giant bill. That's it. I'm not too attached. I'm not attached enough. Just tie it to my arms and legs. <laughs> and Penny this whole time is thinking, mm, as she usually does. I don't know if this is such a good idea. The wind is picking up. Hey, now I'm getting picked up too. Investo, where are you going? I don't know, but I'm on my way. Hey, I can see my house. 
I'll meet you back there when you land. I hope, says Penny. I Meaning, hope that he lands. A giant dollar isn't a solution to money problems. Because of scarcity, we all have to make choices. And here is your next word wall card. There is a stop sign on your lesson plan at this point about making choices. And remember, you know, you are welcome to write on your copy of the book. Nobody else is going to see this. So put your own little notes, whatever you want to do, onto your copy. And so number eight tells you that here is your word wall card of choices. And if you'll hang that up with whatever you have there, um, you know, if you have a board, a wall, tape it up, magnet it up, whatever. And so um, if you were going to go away, so, so scarcity requires choices. If you were going to go away, you're going to ask the students um, to visit your grandparents for a week and can only take one suitcase. How would you decide what to pack? And the answers will vary. Would everyone make those same choices? And no, of course they would not. So you're going to re continue reading and it says, so Penny's musing about all of this and says, let's see how that works. I have a job watering my neighbor's flowers. Now I have money to spend and I want a new bicycle and I also want a video game but I only have enough money to buy one of those. I didn't earn enough to buy both, so I have to make a choice. And that's a scarcity problem. And you're going to go to, again, a stop sign. Oops, sorry. And you're gonna to go to number nine on your lesson plan and ask, how do you decide what to do with your money? And you'll get, different answers from different students, call on a few, um, see if some of those answers can include that they have a savings goal. So they're saving, oh, perhaps even for college or something like that, um, or for something that's more immediate that they'd like to have. So explain when you have a specific thing that you want to save for, that's called a savings goal. And it's always good for us to have goals. I know at school, the students have certain goals for the classroom, for themselves, and so forth. So number 10 says, continue reading and Investo drags back in. Obviously, he landed. And Penny says, Investo, you're back. What happened to your giant dollar? Well, I traded it to the baker. He's going to use it as a tablecloth. He got more flour and swapped the giant bill for a chocolate chip cookie. So much for scarcity. And so he ended up with the cookie he wanted at the beginning. But you still only have one cookie. Yes, but thanks to my anti-scarcity machine. Oh, no. What do you think's going to happen? He puts it into the machine and it ends with, oh, what a cookie. So his little tiny cookie ended up as a great big cookie. The end. Well, it's not exactly the end because there's another part to this story. It's the end of Investo, uh, Investo's story at that point. But the next few pages say, now you can build your own anti-scarcity machine. So this is where it's going to explain how you can tackle scarcity. So Investo says, it's even better than mine, Penny. Right, Investo, it's as easy as one, two, three to have anti-scarcity. First, save your money. Number two, deposit it in an account that pays interest. Number three, let the interest compound. 
So the next page explains what those things mean. Number one, save your money. When you save your money instead of squandering it, and you might have to explain that squandering means wasting, you'll have more for things that you really want. Number two, deposit it in a bank account that pays interest. And of course, there's our big word that always goes with saving. Save your money at a bank in an interest-bearing account. And it goes on to say, interest is money a bank pays you for depositing your savings with them. And number three, let the interest compound. And we're not really um, expanding these concepts this year um, because we're sticking more to the, the scarcity and the choice concepts. But this goes on to say, compounding means that the interest your account has earned also earns interest when you keep it in the money, for, pardon me, in the bank for a long time, and your money continues to grow because the interest is also earning interest. So saving your money is the best way to fight scarcity. So you'll have money for the things you want. And actually there is not a stop sign there. But what, because it's the end of the story. But what I did was here, I wrote lesson plan 10 so that you know where to continue on your lesson plan when you have finished reading your book. So um, what you're going to ask, what is interest? And of course, it just gave the definition for them. Um, it's money that the bank pays you for being their customer. And you're going to explain when you deposit your money in a bank, it doesn't just sit there waiting for you to take out that same money when you come in to withdraw it. Instead, your money gets loaned to someone else. That someone else pays interest back to the bank. And part of that interest then gets passed along for you as a thank you for letting them use your money. So that extra is what interest is. And the longer you leave your money in the bank, the more interest your, your account is going to earn. So now you're going to distribute the handout. And we only have one activity that's going with this this year. And it has to do with scarcity of money and having to make choices. So you're going to distribute this, make sure every child has a pencil, um, and have a student read the scenario at the top of the page, which says, let's pretend you want all of the items pictured below, but you only have $15, so you must make choices. Do you want to spend now to buy some things? Or do you want to save money in a bank and have your money earn interest? And so they're going to need to make the choices. Under each picture are ovals with a each one with a dollar sign in it, indicating how much that item is going to cost. Now remember, you only have $15 to spend. So the book has four ovals. It would cost $4. Um, a video game would cost 10. Snacks would cost five. A skateboard, fancy skateboard, would cost 15. And then a ticket to a movie would cost 10 because of course you're gonna get snacks too, you know. And then your choice that's in the bottom middle is instead, I'm going to put it in the bank. So what they're going to do and the directions say, choose what you want to do by filling in $15 spaces. Now that might mean they're going to fill in four for a book, which means they'll have 11 left over. They don't want the other things right now. 
because they'd really like to go to a movie, but that's that costs 10. So they're going to put the 11 extras into their bank, filling in 11 spaces here. And um, it says, what is your savings goal? They'll write that. Maybe he wants to go to the movie, but he needs to get enough interest or earn one more dollar to be able to do that um, since he only has 10 in his savings account. Or maybe he wants the skateboard, he or she wants the skateboard, and that costs 15, in which case they would fill in all 15 circles or fill in or X, you know, whatever. But to make sure that indeed on the card, they end up with 15 ovals filled in. And then at the bottom, it says, do you feel that you have enough money to satisfy all of your wants? Well, really, nobody ever does. <laughs> If you do not have enough of something, and it says in parentheses, money, time, space, supplies, you have a, and what you're looking for is for them to put the word scarcity on that line. So then you're going to do wrap up, which is back on your lesson plan as number 14. And to wrap up, you're going to ask, so what word describes not having enough of something? That can be money. It can be time. Always a scarcity of that, isn't there? And um, and you want the, somebody in the class to answer scarcity is, is the word that describes that. And what is a savings goal? Uh, it's when you don't have enough money right now to get what you'd really like. And that can be a long-term goal. It can be, you know, an, a used car when you turn 16. It can be college. Um or it can be something like a skateboard, but maybe you only have $10 and you need 15. Um, they're actually, I think, a lot more than that. But And then the last question, how do you benefit from saving money in a bank? And of course, that is um, the, the key to all of this, that your money will earn more money um, even if you aren't putting in more deposits, that money in the bank is going to continue to earn interest. So that's the end of your lesson plan. And, and at the end, of course, uh, you will thank the students for being so nice. <laughs> yeah, thumbs up. And, um, and thank the teacher for allowing you to come in and, and talking about savings and so forth. And then you may hand out the gifts to the students. So if you have any questions about that, I hope you'll contact um, me at the center or, or Greg at DBA, and we'll get any, anything worked out if you have difficulties with that. So thank you very much. Good luck. Have a good time. <laughs>